You're watching K2 News, honored with the Emmy Award for Best Newscast. We have a story now about five young musicians from Portland who set out to change music. And then another band copied them. The imposter even stole their band's name. That's when those five musicians told K2's Dan Casuto. Now they're hoping to change the law. I know this is a question that there's almost no answer to, but if you had to describe your music and your songs. We call it Chinatown Dance Rock. <laughs> they sing about love, life, and heartbreak. Their songs tell stories of growing up as first-generation Americans. You can steal their lyrics, but just how does an imposter steal their entire band? Easier than you think. We were on tour in a different part of the country at that time, and, and fans got confused and thought it was us. They went and bought tickets and went to the show. That's when Simon Tam and his four other band members got their first lesson in trademark law. They hired a lawyer and registered to trademark the name of their band, The Slants. When did you start calling yourselves The Slants? Well, well, the name actually started before the band did. The name of the band is a decade old, the stereotype much older. It's about the obvious, the slant of their eyes. Simon and the other musicians considered it empowering, a new way to own an old stereotype. For me, it was kind of like, well, it sounds kind of like an 80s new wave band. The U.S. Trademark Office thought it sounded offensive. They said it's because you're Asian American and that we were too Asian. Um, about being Asian. The trademark office backed it up with thousands of pages of evidence, digging up just about every time anyone printed the word slant in a book or dictionary, or someone posted it on a website or message board, no matter how obscure or outdated. Simon went to a primary source, his father. Even your father who immigrated here from Hong Kong had not heard the word slant. Correct. Yeah, he didn't hear it in the 60s, 70s, 80s. The first time he heard the term was when he saw our band. He, he didn't even know what it meant. He thought it had to do with these lions. <laughs> he was like, On that drum? <laughs> yeah, and he's like, well, you know, shouldn't it be like more crooked? <laughs> the trademark office wasn't swayed. It rejected their appeal. We were going to give up. After like, I think a year and a half or so, we, we thought this isn't worth it. I mean, it's just a name. It's a bigger issue. It's bigger than, than, than us as a band. So they're going to keep fighting. Now, what about free speech? The government says they can keep the name and they can sue imposters and get protections from the trademark law. They just can't get an official trademark. Congress didn't want to sanction words or expressions that could be offensive, so trademark officers consider applications in context. Dan Casuto, K2 News. All right, Dan, thank you.